Hey everybody. Hello, hello, happy Friday. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whenever it is. Lots of familiar people. Mohib is saying, how is my health? My health is pretty good, I think. I can't, I can't complain about my health. <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm a little, I'm a little sleepy. It's kind of early. It's, it's only 9 o'clock for me. Thushar is saying, I can't see. Oh. Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. Lots of people already in the chat talking about today's uh, topic. Lots of people saying hello. Chamith Nikoloi is from Cyprus. Cool. Painkiller, my hair has been cut. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I got a new haircut for you guys. Always for you. Philippe Artur is from Brazil. Romeo is saying sound issue. Alejandro is saying the same thing. The sound is weird. Voice is different. Hmm. Is that right? Okay. Is 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 the sound weird for everyone? Tell me if the sound is a little weird. And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll see what's going on with that. Algeria, Nina from Algeria. Check the mic. Melania is saying she, there's, there's mic issues. Is that you saying no? Okay. So it's normal for, normal for most people. Yeah, just refresh your page, I think. But I mean, I think if it's, if it's good for most people, then it must be, it must be okay. Rosa is saying there's an echo. Some people are saying the sound is low. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep going. Okay. So hopefully the sound is okay for you guys. Um, and I will. I'll look into it in a in a minute here. Okay. Minor issue. Good for you. All right. Well, we'll we'll keep we'll keep trucking along here. We'll do what we can. <laughs> okay. But I see a lot of the same you know familiar faces. I love to see every week. The Roses are here. Diari is here, I see. Rain in Tripoli, cool. Lorena. Aaron Young is in the house. Junti. Junti M loves Jaren's. I see some new people too. Yeah, painkillers here. Who who's new? If you're new, if, if this is your first time, if this is your first time, um say hello. Let me check the, the levels here. It's okay. But it's like I'm far away. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll turn this down too. Hang on, hang on a second here, guys. Hang on a sec. All right. <laughs> yes. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going here. Lots of people in here. Uh, first timers, Dre, Dre Z, Z, Z? How do I say your name? Ayub is here. Slanez is saying the sound is so low. I don't know, it's, 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 it's maxed out for me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, guys. Okay, here, just, just a second, just give me a second. I'm gonna contact my buddy Zach upstairs and see if he can do something about that, if if there's a problem with the sound, I'm going to send Zach a text. You guys talk amongst yourselves for a second. There we go. First time ever sending a text in the middle of the class. Okay, you guys are saying that there's that there's an echo. But the sound is low. Okay. <laughs> how, how about this? How about this? I am... 
Oh, Dean DeMarco's there too. No, my mic, my mic is where it usually is. My mic is, is the same, yeah. Okay. Hang on, guys. This is what I'll do. Okay. How about this? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do something a little bit a little bit different here. I'm gonna go in here. All right. I'm gonna put up a little message for anybody who's joining. Oh. Hang, hang on, guys, hang on. Technical issues here. All right, Zach's looking into it, guys, okay? You guys just try to cr crank your volume if you can, guys, okay? All right, see what you can, see what you can do. And we're going to see what we can do over here. Sounds a bit strange. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, this is weird. Technical difficulties. We'll, we'll see what we can do, okay? <laughs> Rosa's saying just relax and drink some water. I'll do some coffee. It's not the plug, guys. No. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I'm going to get started here, gang. Um, for anybody who's new, okay, anybody who's new, um, hi, I'm Sean, and I'm your teacher, okay? Um, I'm going to be your teacher for the next hour or so, okay? And how it works, um, if I didn't mention it, I'm coming to you uh, from Vancouver, live, from the Canadian College of English Language. And how the class works, um, throughout the class, if you have questions, if you have questions, um, just put them in the chat and I'll try to answer them as, as best I can, okay, as quickly and as often as I can. If I miss your question, just put it in the chat again with a bunch of exclamation points. So what, what does the number mean? I'm not sure what your question is, French Leo, which, which number are you talking about? Okay. Okay, so Ro Romeo is saying he refreshed his page and the problem with the sound was fixed. Okay, so we'll just we'll just keep keep going here. Okay, even if my sound cuts out, even if you can't hear me at all, I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> oh, the 100. Yeah. So, well, our classes in Smart are 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 numbered based on the level. Okay, so this class that I teach on Friday is a 120 level class. I think you can, you can see it here, right? And that means intermediate. That's the class we teach here at, uh, at CCEL. And um, that's what I'm teaching here on Friday. So I teach an intermediate level class. If uh, you're higher than intermediate, if you're lower than intermediate, it doesn't matter. You're welcome to, to join and to ask questions and participate. It might be a review for you, it might be something new, okay? So, um, let's get into it. So if you're in the class with me, if you're one of my students, one of my premium subscribers, we're in unit six this week. Starting unit six, we're going back to unit six, okay? Yeah, I know, some of you guys are having sound problems. Um, my sound is as high as it as high as it goes. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what to do, but we'll we'll uh, look into that a little bit later. Okay. So today, as some of you already know, I'm going to go into my presentation here. We're talking about um, we're talking about gerunds. Gerunds. Um, this is something that students have. Um, trouble with. Sometimes students have issues with gerunds. They ask a lot of questions about gerunds. There's a buzzing sound, I keep saying, yeah? Okay. So,
So, you guys have been asking questions about gerunds. So this is where we're going to start, okay? Because gerunds are very common in the English language, and sometimes students um, have trouble uh, with them. Speak a bit louder. <laughs> yeah. All right, we've got, we've got people looking into the sound issues, okay guys? All right. Okay, so the, the, the first question is what are, what are gerunds, okay? And I saw some of you um, asking that question in the chat before the class, okay? And um, it's, well, it's a good question, what are gerunds? So before I tell you what they are, or in order to tell you what they are, right, I have to first kind of talk about what they aren't. What is, what is not a gerund, okay? <laughs> So let's start by looking at three sentences. And this will be um, kind of answering some questions that I saw in the chat, okay? Jihan is saying, buck up, keep going, wear headphones. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good advice. I'd say put on some headphones, guys, okay? All right, so three sentences here. This afternoon she is playing tennis. Now, Peter's saying gerund is pre-intermediate level. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. Some people think gerunds are easy, but then they have lots of trouble with them uh, later on in, in higher levels. So tennis is an exciting game. I think it is, anyway. In my opinion. In my opinion, uh, tennis is exciting. Right? And on the weekends, she enjoys watching tennis. Okay? She enjoys watching tennis. So... In order to explain what a gerund is, first we have to look at, um, as I said, what it isn't. Now, if, if you notice, in these three sentences, you've got a word with ing, right? Now, oftentimes, when you ask a student what is a gerund, they say a verb with ing. And I even see some people saying that exciting is a gerund, for example, okay? Right, and that's kind of the problem. So you have to understand that sometimes in the language, uh, words look the same, but they have different functions, okay? Different functions, meaning they, they do something different in the sentence. Their job in the sentence is different. Their part of speech is different. Okay, so even though all three words, right? <laughs> all three words here have ing, playing, exciting, and watching, they're not the same function. They don't play the same role in the, in the sentence, okay? So let me, actually, let me pop out of up here and go right back into my into my notes here okay because it's important to see the difference between these three and I see some of you guys putting your answers in there and this is good but this is exactly what what we're talking about now is exactly what somebody was asking this question who was asking this question I forget who it was somebody way way back at the beginning of the class was asking about the difference between these ing words, okay? So, this afternoon she is playing tennis. Okay, actually, before I even get into that, this whole, this whole sound thing is, is, is distracting me, okay? If you think about a word like set, okay? Set. So in s the word set and set and set, <laughs> this word sometimes has different functions, okay? The word set can be a verb, it can be an adjective, and it can be a noun, okay? So for example, if you say, I set a date for my trip. In this case, the word set is a verb, okay? In this sentence here, there's Okay, how about a question? Is there 
a set time for this class. Now in this sentence, set is an adjective. Okay, set is an adjective in this sentence. Now you could also use set as a noun and say, I bought a set of, a set of what? Drums, okay? So you've got, just like before I was saying you've got the same word in three different sentences and it can serve different functions, okay? Let me set my mind before I speak to my wife. <laughs> yeah, okay. So here we're saying this is a verb, this is an adjective, and this is a noun. All right? So the same idea you can use when talking about ing words. Okay, now let's look down here back at these, this original three sentences here. This afternoon, she is playing tennis. In this sentence, playing is a verb, right? This is the present continuous, right? Or the present progressive, yeah? Now in this sentence, the verb playing this is what we call a present participle, okay? A present participle is an ing verb that we use in the continuous, okay? Anytime you use the continuous tense, you're using a present participle, and Khalil got it too. Good. Dean DeMarco says, playing tennis is fun. I, I agree, playing tennis is fun. Okay, so the present participle, ing, can be used as a verb, but we can also use the present participle as an adjective, okay? So in this, in this sentence, we're also using the present participle, and in this sentence, the word exciting is an adjective, okay? Nitesh is saying, dating is always exciting. <laughs> yeah, there you go, good. So, in these two, you've got a verb and an adjective. The different, the one that's slightly different down here is the bottom one. On the weekends, she enjoys watching, watching tennis. Emram is saying, why are you skipping my texts? <laughs> is that an example of, of, of the present participle there? That's good. Benchek is saying, am I good at remembering names? Yeah, usually. You could, there are a lot of people in this, in this class, though. It's hard for me to remember everybody's name. <laughs> Unless that's an example. Okay, so on the weekends, she enjoys watching tennis. Now in this sentence, this word watching is a noun, right? It's a noun because here, this is the object of this verb, enjoy. Rosa is saying this is an interesting class, right? Exactly. So, for example, let me let me take this out. There. Let me take this away and say she enjoys tennis. She enjoys tennis, right? She enjoys watching tennis. In this sentence, the word watching is like a noun. It serves the function of a noun. And that, this guy right here, is a gerund, okay? And that's the difference. Whoever asked what's the difference between a participle, the difference is, okay, the difference is a gerund is a noun, and a participle is used as a verb or an adjective. And that is the difference, okay? So let's go back into my presentation. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, French Leo. Yeah. 
just this, just this clause. I'm enjoying the lecture, Kavita says, and that's good. That's a verb, right? Good examples. I, I see lots of, I see lots of lots of good questions. And Raman is saying, why, why is watching a noun? Well, let's talk about that. That's a really good question, Raman, um, and and I will answer that question throughout the class. Okay, so see people sending me messages about the about the sound quality here. Well, it's technical issues that I, I'm not going to deal with now. I'm just going to teach you guys, okay? And let the people that are in charge of the sound quality figure it out. All right? So, here we go. Gerunds are ing verbs that function as a noun. Okay? So it looks like an ing verb, but it's actually a noun. Okay? So, they're always found in a place where you usually see a noun. And that's kind of the, the golden rule, is this is the tip. If you can put a noun, then you can put a gerund there, okay? So if in the sentence, if you can put a noun, you can put a gerund. So if you think about, if you think about some of the places where you, you put a noun in a sentence, subjects and objects, that is where you would put the gerund. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, honestly, guys, you can try to reload, but we're at, I am having mic problems. The mic is not set up properly. But um, when, you guys, uh, when you guys get to work, I'm going to give you some practice in a little bit. And when you guys are practicing, and I put on a little monkey music, I'll try to fix the audio, okay? All right. Or actually, because Zach might be watching right now, when this goes, when I, when I pop off the screen, please send Jeremy down here to fix the audio because I'm not messing around with it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so nouns, uh, gerunds are nouns. Romeo's saying, why do we use a gerund instead of a noun? Well, it depends on what you want to say, and that's, that's, um, that's a good question. Okay, so, music helps me after a stressful day, right? Music helps me after a stressful day. In this sentence, music, there's a noun right there, right? The beginning of your sentence, okay? Trishara, good question. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll come back to that. So, music is a noun. So, you can say, music helps me after a stressful day. After this after this class with all this audio problem all these audio problems maybe I'll I'll sit and just listen to some music yeah <laughs> all right so music helps me after a stressful day you can say listening to music helps me after a stressful day Diary, yeah you're one step ahead of me there good now the question Romeo I think said why why use a gerund instead of a noun, just because you want to say something different, just because you want to show some, some range, some variety, okay? All right, so you don't usually have to use a gerund, but it's an option, it's a choice. So listening to music helps me after a stressful day. Rose is saying, ask Julian to come and fix it because he's handsome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's that's a good idea. Julian should come and fix it because he's handsome. All right, so music helps me after a stressful day. Listening to music, it's the same thing. So Rowan Rowan is saying is all nouns gerunds? No. Gerunds are ing verbs that work like nouns. Okay? Good. Okay. So Here's another one. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about having a cheeseburger. Okay. Now in this case, what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about a cheeseburger. But sometimes we say I I'm thinking about having a cheeseburger for my lunch. Now this 
is a gerund. It's functioning as a noun. And again, I'll tell you, man, that's, that's the hamburger looks too good. I'm not going to be able to concentrate here. <laughs> Aaron Young is saying, what's, what's your question? Can gerunds be used after position? You mean position or preposition? Emron loves burgers. Yeah, me too. I'm a, I'm a burger fan. Gerunds are only ing, yes. And Aaron, you're asking about prepositions? Good question. In this sentence, for example, you can kind of see that, right? There's a preposition here, and then your gerund is here, right? So that's, that answers your question right there. But this is what we're going to talk about today, okay? We're going to talk about the different ways that we use gerunds. And again, we're keeping it simple, all right? This is an intermediate level. And obviously, lots of people have some good questions about how to use gerunds. Okay, so, oh yeah, also, sometimes it's tricky because in one sentence, you can have a gerund here, and over here, you have a verb, right? So don't be confused by these. They look the same, but they're different functions, right? Alejandro is saying, is a gerund a present participle? I would separate those two. They look exactly the same. They look the same, but no. A gerund is a gerund. A present participle is a present participle. Different things, okay? Good question. Diari is talking about possession? Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll get to that a little bit later. Good, okay. So. Another thing to mention is that with gerunds, you can use negative gerunds, okay? We're going to be saying, now clear the confusion. <laughs> I will. It will all become clear, hopefully, yeah? We're going to take our time here. So negative gerunds, you can use not with ing, right? Not with ing in a sentence like this. Look at this. He got in trouble for what for not paying his taxes right motor dream we, yeah we know about the sound <laughs> I'll fix it in a bit and we're just gonna keep on moving moving on here I got in trouble for not paying or he got in trouble not me I pay my taxes <laughs> whoops all right so he got in trouble for not paying his taxes in this case you're using not to make a negative gerund, and that's fine too. All right. Lewis Hahn, I'm not sure what that sentence means. What do you mean by that? I'm not having this attitude. What does that mean? Is that just an example? No, you can't you can't say non-paying here. No, nope, it's gotta be not paying. And Philippe, you can't say not to pay. No, nope, he got in trouble for not paying his taxes. Lewis Hunt, that was an example? Okay, good. <laughs> cool. Alright, so let me show you another example. Okay. Not sleeping enough. Not sleeping enough at night can affect your health. Nitesh says, I learn by not reading, but watching your videos. <laughs> okay, well that's good. I mean, you can read too. You can watch my videos and read. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. So the point is, you can put not in front of a gerund, okay, to create a negative meaning. And we're gonna look at the different, the different ways to use gerunds. Rose is saying, can you explain to us the use of gerund after preposition to and how we know if it is a gerund or infinitive? Um, yeah, just remind me about that in a little bit, Rose, okay? Because we are gonna be talking about prepositions today. Basically, this is what we're gonna talk about today, guys. Gerunds as subjects and gerunds as objects, okay? Um, objects of prepositions, as Rose was asking about, and objects of verbs. 
Okay. Listening to music and swimming are my hobbies. Oh, I see. Dean is asking, can you use more than one gerund in a sentence? Absolutely. Yeah, I enjoy uh, listening to music, reading books, teaching English, and you can go on and on and on. Good. Okay, so gerunds as subjects is the first part that we're looking at here. Okay. And then again, I'm going to try to fix this audio when you guys get to work. So the subject of a sentence is usually a noun. Therefore, therefore, the gerund is also common as a subject. You can use a gerund as the subject. <laughs> I keep getting distracted by some of you guys here, your, your crazy um, example sentences. There's some good stuff out there. But it's, it's hard not to just stare at this, at this chat. You guys are, are more interesting than I am, all right? So the, the gerund can be the subject of a sentence, right? Okay, so cricket. I don't understand cricket. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Maybe somebody can explain it to me. But cricket takes a long time. I don't know why it takes a long time. <laughs> I have no idea why it takes two days to play a game of cricket, I'm not sure, but cricket takes a long time. So in this sentence, the subject is cricket. Okay, very, very popular sport, one of the most um, popular sports in the world is cricket, okay? So in this sentence, cricket, whoops, cricket is your subject, takes, takes is your verb, right? So in this sentence, <laughs> yeah, that's true, you, are, you guys are too interesting to be ignored. I'll come back to that one later. Remind me of that one. Okay, so cricket takes a long time. You can take the subject cricket and replace it with a gerund and say, playing cricket, right? Playing cricket takes a long time. Now the difference now is that the subject of this sentence is not cricket, but it's playing cricket or, or just playing. Learning cricket takes a long time. I guess so, right? I guess I've never really tried hard enough to learn cricket, maybe. Diego, good one. So playing cricket takes a long time. Learning cricket takes a long time. Maybe, maybe even watching cricket takes a long time. But in this sentence, the gerund is in place of the subject. Now, Raman is saying, is the gerund in place of a verb? No. Okay, so remember, that's the one rule. If a noun can go there, a gerund can go there. If, it can, if it's not a noun, it's not a gerund. Okay, good question. If it's a verb, that's something else. <laughs> Dilly Ronald Dahal saying playing cricket in Canada with Sean. Colin, it's my defensive skill. <laughs> Well, I sometimes see people playing cricket in Vancouver. It's not a very common sport to see people playing here, but but you can in Stanley Park in downtown Vancouver. So playing cricket, the point is here that the subject has changed. The gerund is the subject. Rose is saying learning English takes a long time. That's true. Well, I think that that brings me maybe to my next my next one here. Learning a language can be challenging, right? Learning a language. And here, learning a language. There's your subject right there with the gerund, I-N-G, right? There's your I-N-G right there. That's not a verb, that's a noun because it's the subject. Learning a language can be challenging. And there is your verb. French Leo is saying, can we say avoiding playing cricket does not take a long time? <laughs> yeah, you can, you can put those together like that. It sounds a little strange, but you can, you can do it. Alejandro is saying, can we replace playing with another noun to see the difference? Um, with this, this cricket one here? So rather than saying playing cricket, whoops. 
You say watching cricket. Yeah, as I think I said that before. You can say uh, learning cricket it takes a long time. Peter saying, I understand it now. You have no idea. That's that's music to a teacher's ears. Okay? Learning a language can be challenging. There's your subject, there's your verb. So learning here is a gerund. Now here's the tricky one though. Over here, this ing, this is not, this is not a gerund, right? That is an adjective. That's a present participle used as an adjective. And Thushara, yeah, you were you were right ahead of me. Dean says cricket's big in the UK, yeah, for sure. Big in the UK, big in India, I think, as well. Sleeping on the desk can be challenging. <laughs> yeah. Sleeping on the desk can be challenging, I guess, yeah. Nor is trying to learn Chinese. Yeah, that would be hard. Learning any language is challenging, but I would say Chinese would be very challenging for me to learn, I think. Okay, this is really good, guys. Yes, that's right, Jihan said uh, Pakistan. Uh, cricket's very, very popular there, too. Yeah. Okay, so how about this? Let's, whoa. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. I'm throwing a little bit of a curveball here. Mistake of the week. Mistake of the week comes early this week, okay? So this weird day with audio problems and the mistake of the week is coming at you, okay? On the topic of gerunds and subjects, okay? If you're new to the class, what I'm going to do is put a sentence up on the screen, and I want you guys to find me the mistake, okay? Find me the mistake. Um, think about what we're talking about with, with gerunds and whatnot. Whoever finds the mistake the fastest is the, just the best student in the world, officially, okay? <laughs> Yes. Okay, so can you spot the mistake? Try your best. I'm only going to give you five to ten seconds. Let's see who can find the mistake the fastest. Okay, I'm going to pop off the screen. I might even try to sort out this whole audio mess here first, and I will be back. Okay, so here is the mistake. Here's the sentence. Find the mistake. Go for it. I'll be back.
All right, guys. How's the sound? How's the sound now? Whoa, I think really loud now, yeah? <laughs> Maybe is the sound good now? Am I blasting at you now? Because I've got, now I've got a massive, I've got a massive mic in front of me now to see if that helps. Yeah? Perfect. Good. All right. So we're going to, we're going to go from there. Without Sean, the sound is perfect. <laughs> All right, cool. So, um, yeah, if I'm, don't complain if I'm too loud for you now. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's look at this, guys. What's the mistake here? Other than, other than the fact that the audio was, the microphone was on the floor picking up my, picking up my voice. So who got it? Some people... <laughs> Wow, lots of lots of wow, so many answers. Good, good, good. Now I have to go so far to find out who was who was the first one to find it. Melena, was that you? I think Melena was the fastest, but I got so many answers coming in. This is crazy. This is great, guys. Good for you. Now the problem is, absolutely, like you're saying, um, subject verb agreement. Aaron, your your ears hurt? <laughs> yeah. Then turn down your volume. All right. Or maybe I can turn mine. Down. <laughs> okay. No complaining about how loud I am now. I told you. All right. So the answer here, the mistake here is absolutely it is subject verb agreement. The problem with this sentence is wearing skates are necessary. Okay. That's a mistake, and it's a common mistake with gerunds. Now, the problem is, well, I guess you could say the problem is either the verb or the subject. One of these things, one of these things has to change because a gerund is always singular, okay? Gerunds are always singular. So, that's the tip. Where's the tip? Gerunds are always singular. Okay, let me go back here. Let me let me show you how to fix it. Okay, let me pop out. I'm gonna copy this. I go into my little my notes here. Okay, so what we're saying? Oops. <laughs> what is that? That's not what I want. <laughs> here, let's try that again. All right. So wearing skates are necessary. This is how you can fix it. Two things. One, skates. Okay, skates are necessary to play ice hockey. Absolutely. All right, turning down the microphone will distract the gerund class. <laughs> yeah, right. So, skates are necessary. That's right, because skates are plural. Okay, so again, the problem, the mistake was something we talked about just a couple weeks ago with whoop now I've got a huge microphone in my in my way now this is just this is what we call a gong show in English right subject verb <laughs> agreement gong show means when everything is going badly right <laughs> when just bad things are happening again and again it's a gong show all right so subject verb agreement is the problem yeah skates are necessary there that's correct Right, because skates are plural, and the verb are, in this case, is the verb you need. Okay, now if you change it to, let me go here, wearing skates, if wearing is your subject, wearing skates, no, <laughs> wearing skates is necessary. No, I'm saying this word, gong. Whoops, a gong show it's hard to explain it's a cultural reference about a game show from a long time ago but yeah gong show <laughs> anyway, i'm gonna take that out of there so wearing skates is necessary to play ice hockey because gerunds are always singular okay all right also another thing not a mistake at all 
but I don't know why I put that in there because a, a real Canadian is never going to say ice hockey, okay? A real Canadian would never say ice hockey because we just say, we say hockey. We assume it's on ice, okay? If you're talking about uh, some other form of hockey, yeah, then, uh, then you can specify, okay? If you're talking about field hockey, you can say field hockey, but you don't have to say ice hockey. Unnecessary. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's the mistake, and that's what I want you guys to look out for in this next exercise that I want you to do. Okay? I'm going to go down here. I'm going to make this full screen for you guys to see. I'm just going to leave this on the screen so everybody can, everybody can see it. Okay? I've got wood hockey. French Leo, I don't, I don't, I've never heard of that. Do you guys play wood hockey in France? <laughs> Jihan is saying Pakistan official game is what? Is field hockey? Cool. I assume field hockey, not, not ice hockey, right? <laughs> right. So in, in Canada, if you say hockey, we think you're talking about ice hockey for sure. Now in this, in this exercise, guys, this is focusing on gerunds as subjects. So I want you to take a word from up top, change it into the ing form, and finish each, each sentence with a gerund, okay? So the first one, you could say, you know, one-handed here, getting, because I think Jindy's already off to a flying start there, and Raham too. Getting autographs from famous athletes is my hobby, okay? So finish the other seven sentences with one of these words, one of these verbs change it into a gerund, change it into that verbal noun. Now you'll also notice, I'm not a math teacher, but it looks like there are more verbs in the table than there are sentences, right? Well, that's a little challenge for you. There are 10 choices, but only eight sentences, okay? Use each word only once, two of them can't go anywhere. So I'm going to pop off again, now that the audio now that the sound is perfect, I'm going to leave the screen <laughs> and turn on the music again. Put your answers in the chat, and then we'll go over them together. Okay? Go for it, guys.
All right. Good, good, good. So many answers coming in. Awesome, guys. So let's go over these together because, yeah, we, we're kind of behind a little bit because of... Uh, because of some technical difficulties, but we'll we'll try to, to get some more stuff in in here before we're done. Okay, so always remember too, guys, when you're putting your answers in the chat, especially for this um, exercise, to put the letter next to it, so I know which which um, sentence you're answering here. Okay, so the first one is about a cold, a cold in the summer. Let me see some answers here. Rosa Casiero, you got it. Good for you. All right, who else got it? Khalil Wiz, nice one. Who else? Lewis, you got it too. Good. Alejandro, you said okay. You said getting, and that's fine. I mean, getting is up here, but if you said getting a cold in the summer is not very fun, that's that's good. And if you guys said catching. Catching a cold in the summer is not very fun. Well, I don't think catching a cold in any season is fun, but they do say that catching a cold in the summer is the worst for some reason. Summer colds are the worst. What about C? Rugby. Uh, who's got C? Alejandra Good. Yes, yes, yes. Rosa. Um, let's see. Fushara? Yeah, you got it. Good for you. So, rugby, the sport, I would say playing. Okay, I'm just one-handing this keyboard around this massive mic in front of my face here. So, <laughs> playing rugby is quite dangerous. I don't know how true that is, but it's a, it's a rough sport. I don't know. Is it dangerous to play rug rugby? I'm not sure. It's rough, for sure. Hockey's rough, too, though. Okay, what about D? Jerry, yeah, you got it. Good for you. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So some of you said, for D, avoiding the test until next week is not possible. That, that actually works. You could say that. That wasn't really what I was looking for. But if you said avoiding the test... That makes sense. Good for you. Who else can I give a shout out to? For D. Nitesh, you got it. But um, put it, make sure it's a gerund though, right? Not just postpone, but postponing. Whoa, what happened there? Postponing the test. Capital P. Okay, postponing the test until next week is not possible. Good. What about E? Oh yeah, not like lots of good answers coming in. E, what about E? Where's E? Who's got E for me? Well, then I see your question. Yeah, I'll I'll try to get to it. Okay, <laughs> I see your big exclamation points there. Yeah, you guys are saying becoming, becoming, becoming the champion is his goal, right? French Leo, you got it. Good for you. So you don't win the champion. Slanaise, you got it there. Nora, good for you. So becoming, becoming the champion in his, is his goal. And again, all of these gerunds are functioning as nouns. They are subjects. Okay, now I'll go through the next three real quickly because, yeah, we're a little bit behind today for obvious reasons. So the world record is impossible. You say breaking, breaking the world record. I know a bunch of you got it. Let me give one one quick shout out to somebody who got the the right answer here. Who got breaking? Irvin Sabandri got breaking the world record. Good for you. All right, good work. Okay, and two more. A child is a lot of work. Yeah, what could you say? Becoming a child? No. Organizing a child? Emron, you got it. Good for you. Isru says biting. I hope I hope you don't mean biting a child. <laughs> I hope that's not the answer for, for G, biting a child. <laughs> yeah, Emron's got it. Raising. Raising a child. Right? Raising a child is a lot of work. Raising 
more than one child is a lot of work as, as well. Come on, breaking, breaking a child. <laughs> no, no, raising for sure. <laughs> All right. What about H? Your ex-girlfriend is probably the best thing to do. Wow. Lots of opportunity to put different different answers here, obviously. Um, what could you say? Becoming a child. <laughs> Becoming your ex-girlfriend? No, I don't think so. That's <laughs> Um, yeah, ho avoiding, avoiding is your, your option there. Rosa, you got it. Yeah, you can say avoiding your ex-girlfriend, not catching, catching your ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, avoiding your ex-girlfriend is probably the best thing to do. Not breaking, no. Of actually, you know what? Somebody just said, G, avoid... <laughs> Avoiding <laughs> avoiding a child is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, my children are very hard to avoid. I know. <laughs> I try. I try to avoid them, but they keep finding me. Yeah? <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. Um, Berg Volk is saying catching for a hey, catching for. No, you don't catch autographs. Good question. But I would say getting autographs is is your best your best <laughs> answer <laughs> all right philip yeah that that one came to mind i'm not i'm not going to say that <laughs> i'm not going to say that one about your ex-girlfriend though <laughs> but yeah that did pop into my head as well yeah playing is playing your ex-girlfriend all right i'm moving i'm moving on here now this is this is good <laughs> okay so Let's go back into the presentation here, guys. <laughs> and I'll spend a little bit more time here. We can, we can go over the hour. We can, we can stretch it out, okay? Um, we've already done the mistake of the week, though, so we've got, we've got time, all right? So gerunds, we've talked about gerunds as subjects. Gerunds can be the subject of a sentence. It can also be the object. Nitesh, you say you got most of them wrong? That's okay. I mean, the, the, the thing about that exercise, maybe I'll say this before I move on. The thing about this exercise is a lot of it is about collocation. And we've talked about that in some of my other classes before, meaning words that naturally go together, like raise a child, break a record, postpone a test, play rugby, catch a cold. These are all collocations, meaning natural uh, word combinations. Okay, so yeah, don't worry if you get them if you get them wrong. That's uh, that's why you're here, right? And that's why I'm here. Again, if it was easy, I would have to do something else with my life, right? And I like my job, so keep making mistakes. <laughs> All right. That's Rose. I agree with you. So gerunds as objects. Gerunds are nouns. Objects are nouns, therefore, they can be, they can be the object. Now, uh, a, a gerund can be the object of a preposition, and it can be the object of a verb. Alejandro is saying the best thing to do is walking. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. I would say rather that's more like a a, a subject complement. Maybe Alejandro, not not so much the object, because it doesn't really receive the verb. Remember, usually the object means it is the it receives that verb. So Alejandro, in your sentence, that's that's what we would call a, a complement. I would say. Okay, Judy says I hate studying science. Right, there's that's a gerund as an object of a verb. Now, Aaron Young, you were asking about prepositions earlier today, right? <laughs> okay, so. Objects of prepositions, as I said, are nouns, right? Usually after a preposition, a noun follows, right? Okay. Raman is saying you're a, you're a noob. Next class is every Friday, same time. Same time, same place, right? <laughs> okay. So if you can put a noun after a preposition, you can put a gerund after a preposition. Okay, so you guys are focusing now on verbs with objects but let's let's look at prepositions right 
Now, prepositions are words that come before nouns to help show when and where and why and who and how. So give me some examples, give me some prepositions. Give me some prepositions in the, in the chat here. What, what do I mean by prepositions? Okay, give me some obvious ones. What is a preposition? I'll go in here and I'll write down some of your answers. Okay, prepositions, give them to me. So something like on, whoa, what's going on there? Where am I going? What's happening here? There we go. So to, about, in, right, yeah, you guys got it. You're saying about is a preposition. Let me make that bigger. That's not big enough for me. There we go. So you guys saying about, into, into, good, in. Why is that not big? There we go. In. Two. <laughs> You're killing me. Of. Yeah, some of you are saying beneath. Right? Beneath. That's a good one. Off. Oh, honestly. Off. Over. By. Up. Down. Now, these are the obvious ones. Yeah, and, and some of you are giving me a, a few less obvious ones. Remember uh, words like um, despite. Despite is a, is a preposition, right? Um, what else? What are some other ones? Among is maybe a lesser, lesser used. Like is a preposition, right? I, have a, I think I have a, a longer list here. Where am I? There we go. So this big list here. Look at all these beautiful prepositions. In spite of. Okay. The cat is jumping onto the table. Onto is a preposition. Exactly. So all of these prepositions can be followed by nouns. And if they can be followed by nouns. Remember we said if you can put a noun there, you can put a gerund there. Right? Roman is saying what's beneath? Beneath is kind of similar very to, to under, right? Beneath. It's talking about position. Like beneath, beneath the water. Okay. Good one. Now, while. Good. Good one, Dre. Among, Marcelo says. Good one. All right. So, so many prepositions. And you can use gerunds after the preposition. Now, look at this. We talked about travel. All right. Now, in this sentence, you got your preposition, right? You got your preposition there, and there's your noun. About travel is your prepositional phrase. This is a phrase, right? So, you could also, instead of travel, you could put a gerund there and say, we talked about traveling, right? We talked about traveling, yeah? Or... We talked about taking a trip. We talked about taking a trip. You can't stop me from speaking, Rosa says. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Hopefully you're not talking about me. I'm not trying to stop you from speaking. <laughs> right, Jenny's saying beneath my feet. I look forward to, to hearing from you. Good. Right. So we talked about taking a trip. There you go. You've got your preposition. And then you've got your gerund. Okay. Now the same thing here. If you say this medal, this medal is for, what's the medal for? It's for winning the race, right? I got a medal for winning the race. Okay. Philippe is saying, is it the same meaning? You mean these, the two sentences? Yeah, it's the same thing. If we say we talked about travel, we talked about traveling. It's the same. It's the same. Yeah, absolutely. So this medal is for the race that I won, right? I have this, I was given a medal for the race. I was given a medal for winning the race. There's your gerund. That's a noun there. Okay. SMH, people are tired, tired of 
hearing politicians' promises. Absolutely. Good. Very good. Now, again, I'll, I'll show you one, maybe one more example of this. We'll use like, for example. So you're talking about, um, what are you talking about? Talking about lunch. You might say, um, what do you feel like having for lunch? Might be a question, right? Or, oh, I, I'll make that big again. There we go. <laughs> I don't feel like pizza. Okay? It's hard to type with this massive microphone in front of me. I don't feel like pizza. Right? There's your preposition, like. Abdul says, he, you missed the entire class? Well, not the entire class. You're here now, right? <laughs> I don't feel like pizza. Right? So, you could say, I don't feel like having pizza. I don't feel like having pizza today. There's your gerund. There's your preposition. Yeah, right. What do you feel like having for lunch? Means what do you want to eat? What do you feel like having? Absolutely. Jari is fed up with arguing. Fed up with arguing. Perfect. Adam, what's your question? How as is used in a preparational meaning? Oh, you mean as, as a preposition? Like this? As? If you said, as a boy, I used to play in the snow. So if you're saying as a preposition, there's your preposition as. Maybe, if that's your question. <laughs> okay. Good, good questions, guys. Okay, so again, the whole point is you can follow these prepositions with gerunds. Good one. Thank you, Rain and Tripoli. Marcello says, I'm good at using prepositions. Is that true? It looks like it's true. Is that true? <laughs> All right. Well, how about this? Let's see how good you are at using prepositions. All right. Let's, let's do one more practice exercise, guys, and then we'll be on our way for today. Okay. Let me, let me back this up here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this up on the screen. Go full screen on this one. And let's see what you guys can do. All right, so I've given you, Nornor saying hi, hi, Nornor. So in this, in this exercise, you've got a table of prepositions and you've got sentences with the verb here. So what you need to do is take a preposition from here match it with this word and make it a gerund to complete the sentence. Jerry's saying, is there any difference between I don't feel like pizza and I don't feel like eating pizza? Um, no, in that context it's the same. I mean, we can sometimes say I don't feel like in other ways, right? I don't feel like myself, right? So I don't feel like pizza doesn't mean I, I, I feel like pizza. Right? It means I don't feel like eating pizza. Shubham Gupta is saying having, if you say I like having pizza, it's not a participle. No, that's the gerund. I like having pizza. Good. Okay. So all, already guys are putting their answers in. So I'll put the first one in because everybody's getting ahead of me. She always thinks about, she always thinks about quitting her job. That's as big as I can make it, guys, okay? So she always thinks about quitting her job. That's, that's too bad. Doesn't sound like a good, a good experience. <laughs> All right, try to finish those words with the prepositions, and then we'll come back and look at them together, okay? Happy monkey music coming back on.
Okay, now I know some of you may not be finished yet, but we're kind of we're we're running on we're running on empty here. We're running on uh, borrowed time, <laughs> so let's let's go through some of it because I do want to to maybe try to answer one or two questions before we before we go. Okay, this this mic is ridiculous though. I feel like I feel like I should be I should be sing, singing you guys a song or something. Yeah, crooning. I should be a crooner sing some Frank Sinatra or something okay so <laughs> let's look at some of these answers the first one C now Trey Brown you I think you got the right answer but you didn't put it in um, in the gerund form there kind of right so you had the right idea okay so you want to say the helmet is for what's a helmet for it is for protecting Whoops. It's for protecting your head, right? Protecting your, your melon. Keeping <laughs> keeping your head safe. Okay, so your helmet a helmet is for protecting your head. Good stuff. Who got that one? Who got that one? Let me give somebody a shout out. Chanel S got that one. Good for you. Berg Volk got that one too. All right. So, D, snowboarding, I don't know if this is true. As I, I've said to you guys before, I'm a, I'm a terrible Canadian because I don't snowboard. And I don't skateboard either. I like my feet on the ground sitting here with you. <laughs> but some of you said snowboarding is kind of like, it's kind of like, now some people said between, it can't be between, right? It's kind of like, Milena, you got it. It's kind of like skateboarding. It's like skateboarding. I don't know if that's true. That doesn't sound true to me. Feel free to tell me if that's absolutely false. And it can't be about. It's not a, Snowboarding is not about skateboarding. It's like. All right? It's similar to. Come on, you want me to sing a song? <laughs> that's extra. Yeah? Steve, you're not going to leave this classroom until you hear me sing? All right, well, get comfortable. <laughs> okay. 
All right. So E, what is the difference? Oh, this is a tricky one because you've got you've got two different blank spaces here, right? Okay. It is true, French Leo. Okay. What is the difference? Ah, well, now difference, blank and blank. That sounds to me like the preposition should be who's got it. Who's got E? Rosa, you got it. Good for you. Between, right? Who else got? Who else got between here? I want to give somebody else a a good job. There's so many answers. It's hard for me to find. Yeah, Aramis. Aramis got it. What is the difference between raising and taking care of a child? What's the difference between raising and taking care of a child? I would say big difference. Right, you guys can discuss that. Almost seems like somebody asked, did somebody ask that question in the Facebook group this week? Or am I going crazy? Or both? Dre's got to go. All right. Thanks for coming. See you next week. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got a couple more here, guys. So supporting something is similar. Supporting something is similar. Who's got F? Who's got F? Where is it? Okay, good, 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 good. You player Campioni. You player Campioni. Got it. Good one. Similar to liking. It's similar to liking something. Yeah, kind of. You can support something even if you don't necessarily like it, but it's I guess it's similar. Okay, and let me go over the the last three here quickly. Refusing is the same as all right is the same as saying no. The same as. That was our mistake of the week in, in the Facebook group uh, yesterday, right? I think in this situation, lying about what you did is better <laughs> than admitting it. Interesting. I wonder what that situation is. I don't know if that's good advice. Marcello says it's strange to see the verb like with ing. Right, right, like this. Right, exactly. And that's why you remember that it's not a verb, it's the gerund, right? But it is on it's not as common to see like with ing, absolutely. We do sometimes use it in common um, in common usage, right? I'm liking this TV show. Uh, but it's very informal. But you're absolutely right, Marcello, and that's an excellent point, right? It's 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 ing. It's a gerund. Good. And yes, in is saying I like I like playing video games. I like to play video games. Yes, and yeah. Sean Alejandro saying Sean, can state verbs be gerunds? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, think about a word like, um, like believe. Believing is yourself. Think about, ooh, how about this one? What do we say? What do we say? We say seeing is believing, right? Seeing is believing is the expression, right? If you see it, you can believe it. Obviously, there are arguments against that, <laughs> but that's the... That is the, the expression that we use. So you can definitely use state verbs or action verbs as gerunds. Good question. Okay, let's, let's go back here. So the last one. She's not interested, interested in learning English. Well, boo, she shouldn't be here, right? She's, obviously, she's not in this class if she's not interested in learning English. <laughs> Regina Samuda saying, can I say, I'm liking that? You will hear people say, I'm loving and I'm liking something. Um, yeah, Regina, that's, it's kind of a, technically we say no, but you will hear it. It's kind of a change that's happening in the language. Um, Now remember there, French Leo, that being noisy, I'm not sure what that example is, but that's not a gerund, right? 
that would be a, a participle. Okay? <laughs> Come on, you, no, you can't say interested. She's not interested to learn? Mm, sounds a little weird. I would say interested in learning. Irvin, Irvin is saying, I'm loving it. That's right. A little McDonald's shout out there. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba, right? Okay, so <laughs> how about this? One thing before we go. I think this was... Rosa, what was your question? You were asking something about... What were you asking me about? You were asking me about the preposition to, right? To, is that what it was? And Shubham is saying, in D, can we use skateboarding without like? Let me see here. No, you need that preposition there. Please tell us how we can know which one to use after two. Oh, now are you talking about the verb patterns? Are you talking about um, infinitive or gerund? Or are you just talking about can you use a gerund after two? Because that's, again, that's that goes back to the very first rule that we said. If a noun goes there, a gerund goes there. So, look at this. I want to... I want to movie, <laughs> right? I want to movie? No, you can't say I want to movie, right? So you can't say I want to going to a movie. It's impossible, right? After two here, right? After two here, you, you, you need an infinitive verb. I want to go to a movie, right? Because you cannot say, I want to movie, but this one's the one that, that blows people's minds, is I'm, you're talking about, I'm looking forward to, right? And this is the one that students go crazy about. They're like, why, why? Why can I, why can I put a gerund? Why do I put a gerund after two here, right? Well, because if you were going to put a noun, what would you put there? I'm looking forward to the weekend, right? I'm looking forward to the weekend, right? That makes sense. That's a noun. That's good. So if a noun can go there, then a gerund can go there. I'm looking forward to having some time off. Right? I'm looking forward to having some time off. Or, I'm looking forward to my trip. Right? There's your noun. I'm looking forward to my trip. I'm looking forward to taking, let's say, taking a trip. Right? And that's why it works. You player is saying he likes talking about his job. That's right. Talking is a gerund because it's the object of the verb like. Absolutely. Aaron says, I'm looking forward to seeing your live class. Like I'm looking forward to seeing, not to see. Exactly right. I'm looking forward to meet you. Nope. You have to say, I'm looking forward to meeting you. Right, now this is, again, this is this is a good one. This is a good one here. August, Liam, shows himself. He's been s quietly watching, and now he says, I'm dedicated, I am dedicated to, and then what, what comes after to? Now, you know that it, it has to be a noun, right? So I'm dedicated to my job. I'm dedicated to my job, right? So again, if a noun can go there, a gerund can go there, okay? And that's why you say, I'm dedicated to doing my job well. Now you've got ing after two. Does that make sense? Hopefully, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So guys, yeah, I wish I could keep going, but I've, I've got other things here that I've got to do today at, at work as well. 
Yasin says, I'm looking forward to my exam. Well, that's a good sentence. I'm looking forward to writing my exam. There's your gerund. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but if it is, that's, that's a very positive attitude. Yasin. Raul says, discussing gerunds, every student looks at Sean. Hmm, good question, Raul. Not a gerund. Discussing, in that case, would be a participle. That's what we call a participle clause. That's a little bit more complicated, and I wish I had more time to explain it. Good, 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 good stuff coming in here. Um, Milena is saying, is it worth experiencing? Yes, that is a gerund, right? Yes, because you would say this, is it worth the effort, right? There, there's a noun, right? Is it worth the effort? Whoops, sorry. Is it worth the effort? Is it worth experiencing? Gerund, good question. Sorry it took me so long, <laughs> Melinda, to answer that question. I know you've been, you've been typing it in there for an hour and a half now. Cool, John Vidal is in there. My goodness, a blast from the past. John, you've been, you've been quiet. Good to see you. <laughs> right. Yes, and that's good, but you say, I'm looking forward to meeting you, Sean, meeting you. All right, so next class, we're gonna continue with this, guys, because we didn't, we didn't finish everything today. We're going, to, we're going to continue, just finish off with gerunds and get into infinitives. So I think I told you guys, here, let me, let me pop out of here. Let's, Let's go to the big screen, big green screen. And I don't look blue this week. Last week I was, I was blue, like a, like a corpse. <laughs> Got a little bit more color this week. Um, we did not do everything I wanted to do. We had some uh, audio problems. Thank you for sticking around, okay? Um, and we are going to continue this topic and get into um, infinitives, okay? Now, I mentioned to anybody who's in the class, uh, the premium subscribers, we were uh, on unit seven, and now we're going back to unit six. And that's just because of some other classes that I taught back in December, okay? French Leo saying hard topic, this gerund. Yeah, it is, right. And, and it's, again, it's one of these things that, like many things in English, we think it's easy, but it's, it's tricky. It's tricky, okay? But, um, but we'll get through it. Being in your class is always a pleasure, Jeremy says. Good, good gerund. Good stuff. <laughs> That's a good subject, gerund. All right. So I'll be back here next Friday. Same time, same place for me, Vancouver. Uh, British Columbia at the Canadian College of English Language here downtown Vancouver and it's always my pleasure to come in and, and see you guys um, let's keep this crazy train rolling here let's let's get more people on board um, tell your neighbor tell your friends tell your kids bring the whole family All right? and keep on practicing keep on making mistakes right keep on keeping on and um, keep on watching the, the other classes, right? You've got Josh, you've got Neil, yeah, you've got Abby, putting on some great, uh, some great classes throughout the week. And um, premium subscribers, I'll put your homework up. I know that I'm a little bit behind on marking some of your homework, uh, Andre, for example. Uh, it's been a busy week here at, at school, so I'll get on top of that. Okay, so until next time, guys, it's always a pleasure. And um, keep putting your questions on Facebook there, too, and I'll, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Okay? I'm, wave, I'm, waving, to the, I'm waving to the chat. No, I'll wave to you guys, okay? See you later. Um, have a good week, and we'll see you next time. Okay? Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. Also, if you want the full experience of being a student in a smart live class with things like homework and teacher feedback, follow the link and become a premium subscriber. Also, if you want to see more videos from this class, check out our playlist.